that's kind of what I grew up with. You know, making our own toys, making our own tools, making our own things to learn by. I made up a camera that was all out of aircraft aluminum, it had titanium bolts holding it all together, and had this pressure plate system that pushed the film forward. But it also had keyholes on the side with insects crawling in and out of the keyholes, real insects. And then had a Pablo Neruda poem etched in the aluminum on the top. <laughs> I started falling in love with photography when I was testing it. I wanted to get my focal lengths right, the apertures right, where I was going to place the pinhole on the film plane. And I just really fell in love with the idea of pure light and time coming through a very small hole, making an image. I always tell people I make the fastest cameras in the world because it's going to speed of light. You know, I'm not relying on uh, binary code, you know, to translate or anything. It's just pure light and time coming through that itty bitty little aperture. They're like, oh, it's steampunk. And I'm like, it's not steampunk. <laughs> steampunk is so like, I got a bicycle, I'm going to glue a bunch of brass gears on it. The gears don't do anything. There's no function to it. All this has function. A function comes first with me. The aesthetics I put in the camera, the little you know, icons or whatever, are there to relate to the subject I want to photograph. That Joshua tree, I was only about six, seven feet in front of it, and it's about 20 some odd feet tall. I do all my own dark room. I have a beautiful dark room in Tucson that I love. So with this camera, um, I started taking photos of children. And like the butterflies, you know, like this one I found in Texas. This one behind the child I found in Mexico, right at the base of uh, the uh, Sun Pyramid in, in uh, Mexico City. And there's also on top, there's a dragonfly and a little Christ figure on the back of the dragonfly. A lot of little details, but I like think that I wanted to do with it. I remember in college I said I did comparative religions, and I was studying different religions. Um, one of my fascinations has been Islam, Jew, not Judaism, Christianity, and the major separation for you know three religions that claim Abraham is a great patriarch, and that's why this is called the Sons of Abraham. The camera also has a piece of the Quran from the 60s, a piece of the Bible from 1860, and a piece of the Torah from 1880. The photo series I've been doing with it has been uh, photos of imams, priests, and rabbis holding Quran, Torah, Bible, with women who are in their last days of being pregnant. And so I've, I've shot an amazing amount of photos with this series. And I've actually shot a, a few of their actual births. A bunch of different ways as far as uh, when people have HIV. The camera itself has his blood in it. So the way it works, little pump right here. There's a steel piston in here with a glass check ball. There's a rare earth magnet on this little chassis. And you kind of see it moving. And I could, <coughs> you can see how it's like thicker here, not so thick there. So I get the blood circulating through so I can get it really pretty red. And that's what all the red you see in the images is shooting through the blood itself. This skull was actually part of a doctor's anatomy kit at the turn of the century in London. And I cleaned her up and I thought she was just beautiful. And it kind of came to me as like, you know, she's in a point of decay. And I thought she was beautiful, so together we're going to study the beauty of decay. It's called the third eye because it's, you know, the all-seeing eye where you can see decay is beautiful, you can see everything. Light comes through the forehead at the third eye. Four by five film goes in here slips down inside, and um, that's how I shoot the images. So when you guys have a chance, um, there's a special little thing in the back here. After I cut the skull in half, I had this like dream for like three nights, two, three nights in a row, that I was in this little girl's bedroom and there's toys on the floor and there's like funky wallpaper. And I was looking out a window and there's two trees, one on each side with a lawn, and I was looking at a sunrise. The sun was just coming up. So I built that whole diorama on the inside of the back of her skull. And there's a little red button. Like if you put your finger right under here, pull it forward, it turns on the light, it turns on the bedroom light, and it turns on the sunrise coming up um, on the other side. He's a 3D camera through his actual eyes. The pupils themselves are pure gold, 99.9% .9 pure gold. 
and the eyeballs are silver, and then bronze eyelids. These are stroking silver too, with I've got rubies, sapphires, turquoise from Kingman, Arizona. Since there's two separate pinhole cameras, there's a divider that runs down the middle. Film goes in here, in the side. What I try to do to see it in 3D, and if you, it's really kind of cool. You look right here in the middle, you slowly cross your eyes, and you try to bring the two images together and make them into one. And when you get it really well, your eyes totally relax. To photograph, or to use this, at, it's called SSRL in Palo Alto, California. It's a 240 meter underground particle accelerator that gets particles traveling at 999.9% .9 the speed of light. What I'm doing is I'm taking the beam coming off, and it, like, the beam that's coming off of it is, um, it's, it's x-rays, but like, you could take an x-ray of your body with like two electron volts of x-ray radiation. The beam coming through in an eight micron beam is 17,400 electron volts. So it's just a massive amount of x-ray radiation. That beam will come off here, it's hitting a bust of Robert Oppenheimer's head. And then x-ray refraction coming off the bus will go through a two micron tungsten pinhole that's mounted in the front and then make an image on the 8x10 x-ray film that's inside here. So the way it works is this will be in the hutch. 8x10 film slips down in this little chamber here. And this is actually the film holder. You hit the switch. It closes around so it's two lead compartments and no radiation will be able to get in. And then you get out of the room, they lock up the doors and everything else. They'll expose, they'll open up the aperture for the beam. It comes in, hits my experiment, or hits Robert Oppenheimer. And then the x-ray refraction will make the image. And the second image I'm going to be doing is of Shiva. And I'm going to be doing these giant um, x-ray panels that look like giant x-rays of Robert Oppenheimer. Shiva, and actually be hanging, the museum will be hanging from the ceiling on four sides of this, um, and then a light in the middle shining outward, so it's going to project Oppenheimer and Shiva on the four walls around.